So I actually have to attribute today's video to Field Rest or on Instagram, he's Mercury Comets. Uh, his name, Travis Field. <sighs> Great guy, highly intelligent. I'm sure a lot of you guys watch him and follow him. He did a video on this that I just recently watched and it really just helped me out to kind of put into words what I've been trying to convey to people and understand even myself. So I wanted to take his video, which he does this on his channel, it's about an hour long. I wanted to hyper compress it down into about six minutes and kind of explain it to you. For those of you that are just getting started out or don't quite understand what's going on, this is specifically kind of for stick welding um, more so. It goes over to MIG welding as well, but I'm just talking about stick welding because that is where I'm kind of most proficient in. So what's going on is when you first get started, they tell you parameters of your welding rod. Your welding rod, say 8th inch 6010, you're running, I believe the range is 70 to 125 amps. Uh, 7018 for an 8th inch, you're looking at 110 to 150, I believe, or 100 to 150 is the amperage range. So what's happening here is if you're only focused on amps on your machine, there's uh, volts that is hugely involved with this that changes the characteristic of your weld puddle. I'm gonna show you how you can get the same amps but drastically be changing your voltage, which drastically changes the characteristics of your puddle depending on what you're shooting for and what you're trying to achieve. So let's get into it. I'm gonna use my machine and show you guys so you can imagine and picture exactly what's going on here and understand how to manipulate a puddle and get it to do exactly what you want to do. If you understand this, you can pretty much do anything that you possibly want with welding. This is probably one of the most important videos that I've put up yet. I'm really stoked about this one, so it might go a little longer than my normal videos, but it, this one is extremely important for you guys to understand and it will help you become some of the best welders out there if you understand this concept. So let's go ahead and jump into it and I'll show you what our little experiment so is. Just using my machine here, just looking, it's kind of backwards from the pipeliner machines. Normally the lower range is on the right side rather than the left, but you can see, uh, I, can, I can click here, go back here, show you guys. You know, this range here, looking at 50 to 80 amps here, Go into this range or this gear, it's 70 to 130 amps. 180 max, you're looking at 110 to 180 amps. And then my max is 160 to 250 amps. And then you have the fine control right here. You guys can go up to 10, all the way down to one. So a good example for me to kind of explain this is, say we're wanting to use an eighth inch 6010 rod. We're wanting 80 amps. I can go to this range here and go 10, and that's going to get me 80 amps. Well, what you can also do is you can go up a gear, and you can come down to about 1.5 to 2 and also have 80 amps. Say you want 125. Same thing, guys. We stay in this range here. You can go up to 9, get about 125 amps, or you can go up a gear and drop her down to about two and you're going to have 125 amps the reason why is because within the range here this 180 range is you're looking at the 110 to 180 amps so this is just a percentage 10 percent 20 40 60 70 percent 100 percent of that range 100 percent would be 180 zero percent or down to one percent that would be the 110 so between 110 and 180, that's 70 amps. So what you're doing is that's 20% of 70 amps, which is 14 amps. Or you got 30, 40% of the 70 amps added to the 110, which is your base. So then you're gonna be sitting at uh, 110 plus 30, you're looking at 140, so you're 140 amps. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying not to go too deep here, just kind of get you the sense of it. So this dial is a percentage of your range in amps. You wanna increase your amps, you go up. Now the point that I wanted to make today is what you're doing when you go up with amps, it's called a volt amp curve. You're also going up in voltage. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get a voltmeter hooked up here, turn the machine on, I'm gonna show you what happens when you're changing this fine control. It's also increasing the percentage of your amperage, but it's also changing your voltage. So here I've got my machine running and I got a voltmeter hooked up to my leads. 
I'm just showing you that with the fine current knob alone, you can change specifically my machine from 27 volts on the low side all the way up to 68 volts on the high side. So the fine current changes two things, the percentage of range and the volts. Always, that is a constant with this fine current on this machine. So what you can do is jump over, change ranges, and it will not change your amperage, or I'm sorry, it won't change your voltage at all. It changes the amperage range. So if you want to be running, say, 80 amps, you can be on this low range and be running upwards in the 9 and 10 and be in 68 to 66 volts. Or you can drop all the way down to a 2 and jump up a range and you could be running the same 80 amps but with only 40 to 30 volts. Changes the, the characteristics of your puddle drastically. So just keep that in mind that you can be run the same amperage in two different ranges and get different voltage. So with saying all that guys, you gotta remember now, with less voltage, you're gonna have a drier puddle, it's gonna have more drive, it's gonna be crisp, real stiff kind of puddle, more dig for sure, more crater, it's gonna have more of a push, a very aggressive arc is what you're gonna have with less voltage. The one and two on your fine current, less voltage. Now when you go high up to 9 and 10, you're going to have more voltage like I just showed you. And with doing that with more voltage, you're going to have a wetter puddle that's going to have less drive, very soft, less dig, less of a crater. You're not really going to get penetration, uh, less push, and definitely very passive puddle. That's with more volts. So just remember guys that whenever you're wanting to manipulate what you're doing, Think of volts as well as amperage with your rods. 6010, 8010, these are cellulistic rods. They do require higher voltage, so you're gonna to need to run up higher, but if you can run roughly in the middle, if you run about a five or six, 50 or 60% of your range, you're gonna be right in the middle, the sweet spot. You're running high enough to run the cell rod, but you'll be low enough voltage that your puddle will be drier and you can stack more metal and it'll be a lot more aggressive, have a really good dig to it. Now, if you're running 7018, I would run as low as possible. If you're trying to go vertical and stack, if you're vertical and stacking, if you wanna be able to put down the most amount of metal, deposit the most amount of metal, you're gonna to wanna to be in the low voltage, very low voltage. I'm talking like one and two, 10 and 20% of your range. So kick it up a gear, go higher, get the amperage you need, because that's where the deposition comes from. Your deposition rate is the higher the amps, the faster you can deposit metal. But the lower the volts, the quicker your puddle will cool. So you can be dumping a bunch of metal and it'll be cooling fast enough where you can sit there and just stack metal. And you're gonna out weld anybody, I guarantee it. So 7018, do as least amount of volts as possible as long as you're welding within your amperage range. But with more volts, you need to run that with your 6010, with your uh, you know pipeline rod. You gotta have the volts to push that kind of rod, but the least you can get them away with, the better, because you're gonna be able to stack and run higher amps. So you're gonna be able to really put down some serious metal, and it'll cool down enough you can stack some metal in there. All right, guys, I hope this helped you out. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. I would love that you subscribe. Please comment, share, like, whatever you guys want to do. I just, I appreciate the support so far. You know that I'm not the end all to everything. I don't know it all. I don't pretend to know it all. I just try to share as I learn and as new things come to my attention, I try to share with you and kind of hyper compress it. So if there's anything I said wrong, anything you want to add to, or anything that you just want to throw up in the comments, please do so. And please get this around. Let's get a good conversation going about it because it was something for the longest time I was not aware of. I've welded and done x-ray welds for a long time and did not understand this concept. So I hope I can help out the younger guys that are coming up. If you know this concept, you could become one of the best and understand your craft way better.